Out of season, Cornwall is a very different picture to the packed beaches of the summer. There's already a high population of entrenched rough sleepers here and homelessness peaks at the end of the season when the tourists leave, the work dries up and the harsh winter sets in. There's new boots pretty much in there, shoes. I'm not quite sure what's happened here really. They've had to leave in a hurry, yeah. Cornwall has the 10th highest population of homeless people in the country, but organisations like St Petrox are trying to do something about this. So we're down in Porth Quay, which is about three miles outside of Truro. We've had some reports of someone rough sleeping down here in a tent. Me and a colleague have been out twice in the last week, um, but we've been unable to make any contact. In rural locations, homelessness is often hidden away. Mark is one of the outreach workers tasked with finding rough sleepers and seeing if he can help them. Hi, mate, all right? Yeah, how are you, all right? Yeah, nice to meet you, Mark. Oh, yeah. You all right? Oh, yeah. I dropped a few bits he comes here. with essentials, oh, yeah. but Does sometimes it's home comforts that people okay, need. No Listen, do you want a... I've got an extra sleeping bag in the car. And do you want a bit of backy? I've got some backy. Do you want a little bit of tobacco? Yeah, I'll give you some. Oh, yeah. It's nice to meet you, all right? Oh, yeah. And take care of yourself. And I'll, yeah. and I'll speak to you tomorrow, yeah? Okay. Bye. His work requires building up relationships with people over time. I was staying there for 10 months. Mark has introduced us to Kevin, who at 49 is sleeping rough for the first time in his life. And things have gone from bad to worse. Yeah, this is where I had my tent and everything else. It was just up there. When it got vandalised, when I come back yesterday, come back to have a look at it, it was all cut and everything else. Kevin told us that after his mum died, he had to leave the council house they shared. Before his tent was vandalised, he was camping on this trail overlooking his old home. That's the bungalow where you got the little, between the two fir trees and uh, where the white truck and blue truck is. That's where the bungalow used to live. That's where my mum used to live. Why would you stay in an area like this rather than kind of being in the middle of the... Well, I just wanted to move out of town so I could be out here on my own. Rough sleepers in rural areas are often driven out into isolated places to get the privacy that most of us find in our own homes. For Kevin, it's also a place to process recent events. It's been hard dealing with like being out in the street and everything else. And dealing with your mum's death? Dealing with my mum's death. I still haven't got over my mum passing away last year, so... Around a fifth of homes are second or holiday homes. Meanwhile, lots of people don't have a place to call home here. There's been a significant rise in rough sleeping in recent years. If we've got clients that are choosing to live in a really rural, isolated location, they're obviously trying to shut themselves off from society. That, that's their choice, and, and we'll try and do everything to, to make life as comfortable as we can for them where they are. There's going to be no easy solution to getting them indoors. It can take us months um, and in some cases years for them to build trust with us. It's, it's more about keeping them alive on the street. We can try and look at maybe putting in safeguardings or something to try and get them the help they need. But respecting their decision to be where they are. We come across a campsite in an area known for rough sleepers. Mark never knows what he's going to find. I'll go down there and just check if anybody's there. All right, it's Mark from St. Petrox. Is going to be down there? Today, the tents were empty, but in the past, outreach workers have found people dead in their sleeping bags. So you can see they've left quite a lot of stuff. There's lots of um, medication. They're all seeing here for Christmas. For all its beauty, Cornwall is one of the most deprived areas in the UK. The poverty gap between seaside towns and the rest of the country is widening. And here, they say that city-centric homeless strategy doesn't always translate. Do you any help we can give you or anything? In this remote region, services for homeless people are spread out over hundreds of miles and access to help is often hard to come by. 
We're on our way to meet Chris, who's told us he's been living in his car due to problems in his personal life. You have to go out of your way to find help down here. Um, I mean, I can imagine in a, in a built-up city, you would probably come across um, people traversing the streets more, looking to help. Um, and again, I don't suppose you're going to get much people passing you if you're in a farmer's gateway, right? So, <laughs> yeah. He hopes, with the help of St Petrox, to be housed soon. Hopefully, within the month, I should be, yeah, in my own place with a bed <laughs> and a pillow. <laughs> that would be really cool. That would really help and, and, and take some of the onus off of me stressing out my loved ones and people around me and putting too much strain on people that have already got a full cup, you know? It may take some time, but there's a plan to get Chris and Kevin into permanent housing. For others who might not be ready for help, all Mark can do is get them through the night. The day after his first visit, Mark and a colleague are back to meet the man in the woods. Oh, are you all right? Are you all right? I've got the, I've got the cooking things here. How's things going, all right? It's a small win, but one that means he will have a hot dinner tonight, which is more than many will get out here in the most isolated of places. You had your porridge this morning? Yeah. <laughs>